Hello everyone. We're going to look now at the assessment 2A, which is a written report for Human Nutrition 2. So this is just a short clip to give you a bit of an overview. This assessment is, as I said, a written report, so it is written in academic language. So when we talk about academic language, it's not written in first person, so it's never using the words such as I or you or me, etc. So what it is, um, have a look at how journal articles are written, and that's sort of the, the language. And we understand this is only the second trimester for many of you, so this might be new in terms of academic writing really important that you watch a clip. So we filmed a clip um, for you with the academic skills team and that goes through in terms of referencing and how to structure a report and uh, that's a great clip to watch. So make sure you watch that because things do change regularly and the way that Torrance reference is different to the standard APA. This is across all universities. They make uh, slight changes to a particular reference style. So you may be using a reference generator, but you always need to check because there will be slight differences. And that is standard across all universities. So please watch that clip and that's been posted up for you in the announcements and also on the discussion board. You will need to use a database for one of the tasks in the assessment. And I recommend you use databases for part of your research. So you can use any of the databases. Um, make sure you watch the database search video in the Padlet, and I'm going to show you where some of these extra little clips actually are. Um, there's also the library resource, which I'm going to show you where that is. Uh, you know, and I'm going to show you for each of those in terms of some of these key points. So module four, there's a video uh, about uh, deficiency and insufficiency. Now, this is a question in the report. So it is important that you watch that. Now, it is me presenting, so you can reference me. However, I'm not going to be a primary source. I'm going to be a, a tertiary source because I didn't publish this. I didn't do the original research. So you'll need to go and find some references to support this, not just use me. You can use me, but you will need to back me up with a primary or a secondary source. Now, if you go to, and that's all in the introduction, module. go to module six. Now, module six, if you look at the introduction, you just sort of work your way down. You'll see it's got here the tips for the database searching. If you click on that, that's going to take you to um, a video, which is actually a library page, which has been developed particularly for this subject. Now, in that page, this is what it's um, going to look like. Let me just skip forward to it. It's going to look like this. And in there, you've got some great information. Uh, you'll see it's talking about assessment two, part uh, B, but this also applies to assessment two, part A. So you can go in there and click on um, some sessions um, to selected micronutrients or macronutrients your resource, which is particularly important for the part B, which is your video, but there's also some information there on um, micronutrients. It's got some great resources there as well. It's also got a video on the right-hand side there, you'll see getting started at the library. It's also got um, some tips on databases, et cetera. So there's a little video on, if you go down to assessment two, part B, it's, all, it's also gonna relate to A, it's the search for ebooks and articles. Um, that's a great one to actually look at. It's also got a little bit on referencing as well. So play around with that site. Um, we help, we develop that to help you uh, find some great information. Now, module five, if you go to the introduction of module five, there's uh, a clip there. Again, it's me, but it's I'm talking about the Australian Food Composition Database, which was known before as NUTTAB. Now, NUTTAB is what you'll need for your assignment to search uh, how much of particular micronutrient is in certain foods. So once you've uh, looked for the top sources of, say, vitamin E, you know what they are and you're going to put them into a table to know per 100 grams um, how much vitamin E is in a particular food. It might be pumpkin seeds. You want to know exactly how much is in there. 
So you would use the nut tab and look it up and you can you can choose um, how much the, the serving size is, but we've recommended that you put it in for 100 grams. Um, that might be a lot of pumpkin seeds, but it gives you an idea of how much that particular micronutrient you've chosen. So use that as a tool. Um, also have a look at module seven. Now these are all in the introductions. So module seven, click on that. You've got the uh, nutrients to the lifespan. So what I've done there is it's a bit of an overview of all the stages of the lifespan and what nutrients might be involved. Now, if you'd like the full PDF, that is available in the Padlet. So if you go to the Padlet, have a look at that and you will find the PDF. So this gives you a little bit more information. And we've already discussed that that, uh, that, that particular um, library page which has been developed for this subject and it's a great resource for you. A couple of things that I want to talk about is where students go wrong, but we'll just start with this one. So you'll need to use this site, which is developed by the National Health and Medical Research Council. It is the nutrient reference values. Now, the nutrient reference values are part of your assessment, and you're going to be talking about the RDI or the AI, but it comes under the framework of the nutrient reference values. So use this site. One of the things that students go wrong is they reference the page. The page is called Eat for Health. Now, that is a bit confusing because they think that's the reference. The reference for the Eat for Health page is the National Health and Medical Research Council. And I'll give you an example underneath, as you can see. Eat for Health is like the page, but you've got to reference the developer. So the developer is the National Health and Medical Research Council. Now, what you'll see is you, the first time you list it, you'll need to list the name in full, and then you can do the abbreviation, NHMRC, and that would be what you would put above your table. So that's another thing that people often get a little bit confused about how to reference tables and figures. So um, structure, I've done a really clear structure in the assessment brief. Stick to that structure. It'll make it a lot easier for you. The word counts are just suggested. Um, I've got a bit of a leeway, so I haven't done completely 1,500 um, words. I've done a little bit less, so you can play with that, how much you put into different sections, but it gives you an idea of the framework. Just remember that reports should be really easy to read. They're in academic language, so avoid bullet points. Please do not make this about a bullet point presentation. That's fine for presentations, but look at what a journal article looks like. They don't have bullet points. So it needs to be in academic language. So use the Torres cover page for all your assessments. Uh, you don't get marked down if you don't, but it's just good practice. Read the frequently asked questions. Um, you'll find some links to documents, et cetera, there as well. Frequently asked questions are available on the discussion board. That's what your cover page looks like. The reason we ask you to do that, it has a little bit of a declaration, as you can see here. The declaration is that it is this is your own work, et cetera. So it's a, a declaration. If you wanted to develop your own declaration, that is totally fine. So um, submit this document as a Word document, okay? Your learning facilitator may write back to you and say, you only submit it as a PDF, please submit as a Word. Always keep copies of your Word document. So I like to keep sort of draft copies and then do a final copy. If you ever get, uh, if you have ever have to be investigated, they will ask you for your draft copies. It must be as Word documents. Now, if you're on Apple and you're saying, you know, you don't have access to Word, all students have access to Word and all the functions for Microsoft through your Office 365. So when you go into your student, your student email, you have um, Office 365, you have access to Word. So please submit as a Word document. So please don't be surprised if you get an email from someone saying you submitted as a PDF, please submit as a Word document. Also remember that you can submit as many times as you like up until the deadline. 
if you have undertaken this subject before and you didn't pass the subject, you cannot submit the same assignments. You'll be marked, you'll be marked as a zero because it's classed as self-plagiarism. So that's really important if you have undertaken the subject before. And also things do change each trimester. So it's 1,500 words. Use the headings. Uh, have a look at the structure in the assessment brief. Use tables such as the RDIs or if they're not available, the, you know, the uh, adequate intake, etc. Have a look at what's excluded, included. You'll see here on the assessment brief what is excluded. The references is excluded, appendix pages, appendices, tables with number, tables with, with uh, da like data. So let's go, you've got the RDIs and you've got um, age groups in there. That's all excluded but words in a table are included. Okay, so to say that again, numbers, so data is excluded, words are included. Um, headings, so headings are excluded. All right, so you've got the structure, make sure you include a table of contents. A table of contents um, include, you know, basically um, list your headings, your subheadings, etc. That's what it looks like. Make sure you include the page numbers. Um, have a look at the frequently asked questions. We require about 15 references. You'll be marked down if you have less than 10. It's part of the reference if you look at the uh, marking rubric. How do you reference uh, tables and figures? This is where a lot of students go wrong. If they're looking at the old way of referencing or standard APA 7 referencing, it may be slightly different. APA 7, the Torrance edition, which you need to make sure you download in the referencing page, the table always has a heading, has a, num a name, table one, and then a heading, and you will see the reference is just underneath that table one. So there's a heading and the reference is included. Before it used to be below the table, it is now above the table. The same goes if you reference a figure, um, so a picture, etc. it has to be above. Make sure you also include page numbers. This is really important as students do get marked down. Page numbers must be included in all in-text citations. If you're doing it as an ebook, um, have a look, usually the page numbers are there on the ebook as well. So they're kind of the main things that are actually changed, but have a look at that referencing workshop as well. Look, ideally references are less than 10 years old, but if it's something like, say, um, uh, a, I don't know, a physiology textbook, that's okay, it's not, it's not going to have change, etc. Or if it's a government website that hasn't been updated the last 10 years, but try and see if there is a more updated version, etc. Um, make sure you have a look at the reference page, APA 7, it did change last year in terms of the Torrance edition did change, uh, APA 7 did change as well. No uh, websites, please, except for government websites. A couple of other things that uh, you could use is a referencing management software. This is available on your referencing tool page. If you go to references, you'll find this and you can do um, use Mandalay or Zotera. Mandalay is free and there's a guide there. You click on those links, you'll be able to look at how to use it. Referencing generators, um, management softwares do make it easier. CiteMe isn't always correct and it will not do the APA 7, the Torrance edition, so you need to make sure um, that it's correct. One thing that CiteMe does wrong, and I noticed this, is that when you're quoting the or referencing an in-text citation for Whitney et al, it comes up with this, the author's first name, which is Eleanor. Eleanor et al is not the correct reference. That's the person's first name. I'm not sure why it does that, but it's Whitney et al. So make sure you have a look at that. Please use the current version of the textbook. It is available as an ebook. So make sure you're looking at the most recent version. Um, the ebook online may say 2023 or 2024, but just have a look at that to make sure that you are using the most current version. 
Another thing that students do wrong is in the referencing page, you need to make sure that the referencing uh, uses a hanging indent. So referencing uses a hanging indent, is double spaced, this one's not double spaced. Um, referencing heading, this one here, needs to be centered and you don't need to actually number it, that's incorrect as well. So use the, um, use the uh, referencing as a heading, no number, center it, then the referencing each line um, after the first line has a hanging indent and it needs to be double spaced and ideally remove the hyperlink, but that's not, not uh, work. Not marked down that. Um, just make sure also that uh, yeah things actually make sense. Do your sentences link or your paragraphs link together? Typically, you know, um, you know it needs to it needs to flow. So uh, I use um, you can use the one we've got now, which is the Brain Fuse. You can use Brain Fuse. If you're a member of a local library, you may still have access to Studiosity. I particularly like Studiosity, but that's you can get it for free through a local library, like a community library. Um, just make sure that things work together, that it actually makes sense. Um, and also the thing about coercion is that, um, you know, making sure that it makes, makes sense to the reader, et cetera. And just remember, this is an individual assignment. Check your work through Turnitin, and then you can make any changes. So you can check it first. Um, Depends on how many signs coming in, it might take a little bit longer. If it's a busy time, obviously, you've got lots of students submitting at the same time, but uh, it gives you an idea of, of what maybe you forgot to reference. You might have popped it in there, pop the reference in at the end, but you haven't paraphrased it into your own words. So that's something I just took from the internet, threw it all together, and that's what it came up with, which is not what you want. Highlight like that. So, um, Start researching, start writing, bring your questions to tutorials, make sure you watch the academic skills workshop that we ran, uh, which was fantastic and it gives you some great insight. Good luck everyone, and we look forward to reading your assignments.